So these guys are three weeks old. We're about to weigh them. They are about seven weeks old. Best laid plans are only good if you actually follow through with them. We got 10 boys in here that are ready to go in the freezer. But overall, it's really good. You got there. A little girl. This is so cute. You're so sweet. These guys are three weeks old. They've been without heat for a little while now. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting them in the cage. I guess I put the sandbox in the wrong one. Go ahead and move them out. She's kind of like, where am I? Where are my 20 brothers and sisters? <laughs> we'll bring the rest of your buddies. Just a minute, okay? Now let's get the rest. These guys are so much more chill than I ever expected. Most of them. A few oh, of them the are. Boy. A few of them are a little more excitable, but a lot of them are just chill. They're just gonna stay in there. Let's pick them up. The size difference is crazy. Some of them are really. Kind of smallish, yep. and then others are really big. Yep, some are chill. I already know which one is going to do it. Well, we found the dust bath. These guys are three weeks old and they're completely fully feathered already, as you can see there. So, and then in another three to five weeks, they should be starting to reach maturity. Got some helpers with me here today. Yep. Um, we got all the boys quail in this tub right now because we're about to weigh them. They are about seven weeks old almost, give or take a few days. Um, so in the next week, three weeks, they're going to be reaching full maturity to where the girls are going to start laying eggs. Um, some of the boys have already reached sexual maturity, so we're going to where they're ready to start breeding. So we want to find out which ones are the biggest to put in with our girls. And then let the rest of them continue growing out until virtue time. So we got a scale here. These guys are making sure they don't jump out because yeah. they're quite jumpy yeah. right now. Yep. So yep. we're going to go ahead and weigh them and thought we'd bring you along for that. This one doesn't look or feel super heavy. So we'll do him first and he give us a baseline. Hello. There we go. 10.5. Ounces. Eight point nine ounces. Ten ounces even. No one's help. Woo! Woo! Ten point two. Ten point nine. Eleven even. We're trying to work our way up smallest to biggest. See if we're right. We'll call it eleven point five. Ten point five. Eleven point one. Five. That's eight. Not very heavy. eight. On the bottom, that side is eight. I think these are the largest three. 12.9. 12.9. He's a big boy. Can you open the girl's cage? 
12.9ers when it paid to place with the girls. This one's not as big as I thought. 11.4. 11.9. Eleven point nine okay. was already in there. Okay, so this here. one's going up top. This guy earned himself a place with the girls too. Um, oh, let me show you real quick before I put him in there. See how this guy has a nice red chest? That's how we know he's a boy. Girls have a speckly chest. Just out of curiosity, girls are usually bigger than boys. Did you yeah. find one? Woo! And Lightyear. Yeah, she is 12.8. You're a big girl. They're all a little bit stressed out at the moment from being handled. But, um, so you want to have one male for every four to six females. So if we have, I think we have eight females, and I just stuck two males in there with them, so that should cover them. Good. So as soon as they start laying eggs, we should have fertile eggs and then we'll be able to start incubating and do the whole process over again. So I just came outside to see this. That's a quail. She doesn't belong there. Neither do those two over there or the one that's under that chair. I think the girl's door got left open. Now we gotta catch them. And I, I'm gonna have to count because I don't remember how many were in the cage. Goody. Okay, we got all but two of them in. It started downpouring right as we were about to come out and get them, so I did not record. Um, it's yes. let up now, but there's two more missing, we think. Because mm -hmm. if my math's right, we should have 20 total. There are 10 boys in the bottom. We have six girls and two boys in the top, so we need to go find the last two girls, and we're thinking they're in the bamboo grass. Logan just for a little bit longer but we may not find them. We had actually talked about putting like such just a chicken wire fence around this area because sometimes when we feed them they get like super hyper super animated and sometimes a few will get out and if they're just over here it's okay to catch them but once they get in that blue bamboo grass it's hard. I mean they were designed to hide in brush. <laughs> they're very good at camouflaging and they're very good at just sitting still and not being seen. So that makes it hard, but best laid plans are only good if you actually follow through with them. So I guess I know what we're doing. Next, getting a fence around this area. So if they do get out, they stay here. Found one over here towards the basement. You gonna get her? You gonna put your hand over her so she doesn't flush. Oh. She's gonna go hide under that cinder block. <laughs> Is that chicken helping? You gonna get her? You just gonna chase her all the way down the stairs? Are you trying to get her all the way down first? There you go. Oh, did she go under your legs? <laughs> you got her? Good job. Let's go get her back in the cage and see if we can find the last one. Hey, here you had something to show me. <gasps> what is that? It's a, our first number one quail egg. Look how pretty it is. It's like half and half colors. Yeah, except it's got a quarter of brown on the top and two quarters of white. That is who it's almost it's a slightly blue. bluish, isn't it? Yeah. That bluish, is so pretty. Tannish and brownish 
and whitish all at the same time. Nice. And our girls are eight weeks old. Eight week old jumbo caternix quails. Thank you, ladies. Good job. Okay, we got ten boys in here that are ready to go in the freezer. So first we're going to weigh them to see what their final live weight is. And then we'll dispatch them. And then we'll weigh them again when we're done to see how much meat we get from them. Ready? Yep. I got the gross ears. Okay. So bad, huh? No, not too bad. It took what too bad. 45 minutes to do all 10 of them for our first time and being slow, not knowing what we're doing. Not bad at all. Much faster than doing chickens and much, much faster much. than doing duck. <laughs> okay, then. Well, I see some green we'll be doing this again in a few months. So, you gotta put some more in the incubator, too. Yes, as soon as we get a decent amount of eggs. Hey you, you looking forward to eating those? Mm, a little bit. A little bit, a little bit, yeah. I'm kidding. Well, I I'd am. rather eat a whole quail. I no. would like to eat a whole quail. Yeah, and those quail are pretty small. Even the legs. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we'll be having quail for dinner this small. week. We have come full circle and it feels really good. We are having those quail boys for dinner tonight. And now the females have been laying really well, and we're going to put some in the incubator and start the next round. Um, and Mike was pointing out the other day that this is the first time where we have really done the whole loop on our farm, where we hatched them, raised them, butchered them, and now we're hatching their offspring. So it's a really good feeling. So we're going to go ahead and get these eggs in the incubator, and then we're off to round two. Um, I gotta say, it, this super fast turnaround is so nice. And hopefully as we, you know, now that our own are laying, we don't have to wait for, you know, eggs to come in the mail or waiting for them to get to laying age. We'll be able to hatch more frequently, grow them out more frequently, butcher more frequently, and just have that perpetual supply of eggs and meat, eggs and meat for a really long time. So, definitely recommend the quail, I think. Of course, I'll let you know tonight what we think of the flavor. <laughs> but as far as the timeline, that's where it's at. You cannot beat that. What if we eat the tiny box? Is it good? What does yeah. it taste like? It tastes kind of like chicken. Like chicken? Mm -hmm. What do you think? It tastes kind of like chicken but more chewy. Chewy? What about you? You're just like digging in there eating off the carcass. <laughs> 
it's good, but I the flavor makes it good. That's <laughs> good. So, tastes pretty much like chicken. Not chewy. It's good. It's delicious. Yeah. Good. You see. My turn. Bit the wrong side. There's a pawn there. Like it's hard. I don't know if I would say it's like chicken. Um, hmm. Is it chewy? Like the flavor is, this is leg, but it's more mild than like a chicken leg flavor. And the texture is slightly different, maybe more fibrous? Not tough, just there's more fiber there. So, but overall, it's really good. Yes, it is. Can we see them? 